Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are still gonna be working in this hallway. If you've missed the last couple of videos, make sure that you go check those out because we have painted the walls and installed new flooring. And today I wanna to work on a really fun project. Okay, a couple videos back, I shared my mood board for this hallway and you guys picked out the brick in the mood board and you said, is that going to be an accent wall? And that is what we're working on today. And it's gonna go right here. Now, just like every project I do, I try to find the least expensive way to do this that's still gonna match my design style. Now, if I was to cover this entire wall in like thin brick, it would be about $700 to do this wall. And the goal is to do it in less than 150. So I'm going to be using brick paneling from Home Depot, and you've probably seen this project before in other places, but I am going to add, as always, my spin on it and see if we can get it to look as realistic as possible. So the first thing we need to do is take some measurements of our wall. Okay, here are the panels that we're using. These are two panels side by side. You can see they line up together. And now normally I would notch out all of these little pieces so you couldn't see the seam, but these together are almost, are a little, about eight feet. And then my wall is a little bit less than eight feet. So if I notched them out, it would be too, it wouldn't be wide enough. So, and I'm not buying an entire other panel just for that. So we're going to do our best to hide this seam right here, but we need to cut off the bottom piece right here. So it will, fit the height of our ceiling. So my ceilings are eight feet and these are eight feet, but we have to account for the baseboards. After I trimmed the bottom of each wall panel, I brought them both inside and I'm just checking to make sure that it fits here. And then I'm also going to make sure that it's completely level, even though my walls definitely are not, but we'll worry about that later. And then I am just taking my nail gun and I'm using, I think one and a half inch brad nails here. And I'm just going to shoot that into the board, mainly concentrating on the sides so it doesn't come up. And then I took some measurements and I had to trim the side of the second panel before I could put that up because it was going to be a little bit too wide with both of them at full width. But I also had to remove this cover for this light switch and I'm going to take some measurements for that kind of the width from the side and then the height that it is and transfer those measurements to my second wall panel and then I am going to cut out for that to make sure that it will slide right on top of that and not have any issues when I'm trying to nail it in. Okay, yesterday we got all of the brick up on the walls and today we're gonna work on making this look more realistic through a lot of trial and error, I'm sure. But the main thing we're gonna be working on is covering these seams. I could tell you I know exactly what I'm doing and I have an exact plan that's all gonna go exactly how I planned it. No, I don't. I have a bunch of supplies, I've watched a bunch of videos and I'm just gonna try to see 
what's gonna work to make this wall realistic, the first thing that I'm gonna suggest is to find an inspiration photo that's gonna help you pick out colors, kind of keep you on track as you go along the way. So that's my plan and I will explain step by step everything that I'm doing and what works and what doesn't. Okay, here's what I'm using for my first step that's gonna be super important in covering those seams and those bricks in the middle. I'm going to be using like a mixture, it's half of this spackling or joint compound and then half of this stucco patch. And then I will just be tinting it with a paint color that I picked out, Burnt Auburn from Sherwin-Williams. So I'm gonna mix those three together and it's going to create texture on our wall and it's going to hide those seams in the middle and I'm going to do it all over not just the middle to add texture to the bricks all over. Okay, I've been experimenting with the wall. After I got done putting the stucco and joint compound on, it was just looking a little too red, so I wanted to tone that down. And so I took a sponge and some white paint, and I am just like dry brushing some white onto it. And it's crazy how realistic these are looking. So ignore that right there. I was just playing around with like some grout options, but so I wanna take the sponge and do that to this side over here. Okay, the white wash distressing has been added to all of the bricks and I'm trying not to drive myself crazy because I know that there's variation in brick, but I am who I am. So the next thing that I wanna do that I think is gonna make the brick look more realistic, although, I mean, the brick itself is looking really realistic, but I want to put some mortar in all of these grooves and it will also cover up these cracks. Now I think this did a good job of covering up those cracks. You can't really tell. And once we add in the mortar, it'll look like one big giant wall. Thank you. 
Okay, I've started grouting the brick, and this is the look that I'm going for. It's kind of over grouted, which makes it easier for me anyway, because it's hard to kind of, I'm using this bag to get the um, grout into the lines, but they're pretty shallow, so it's hard to not be messy anyway. So good thing that's the look I'm going for. I was having a really hard time getting this grout to kind of stick in between the bricks and I realized it's because I mixed the grout way too thick. So I mixed up a second batch and as I was pouring the grout, of course, in case you think that nothing goes wrong, stuff like this happens to me all the time, and I mixed it up much thinner than the first batch. I figured out that the ratio of like seven parts grout to one part water was perfect for the grout bag. And then I let that sit for five minutes just to thicken up a little bit. And then, then I mixed it again and put it back in the grout bag. And that consistency worked so much better. After I added all of the grout in between the bricks, I let it sit for a little while just so it would harden a little bit. And then I took my putty knife and kind of just pushed it down so it would flatten out a little bit and would completely cover all of the gray that came as the grout for the wall panels. And this did a really good job of hiding all of that. Okay, doing this section of wall over here, that's just like half of it, but it took forever. So I think I'm going to try a new technique. I think I got the consistency of the grout right, but for this grout bag, I think I need to trim this to be wider. So whenever I am using the grout bag to fill it with grout, it will fill these cracks more and I don't have to like push it down as much. Okay, I've let this dry for a while and you can see like it's not super, super soft anymore. It's still kind of pliable, but it's not really like if we touch it where it's gonna, we're gonna put a huge dent, like I can touch that and it doesn't look much different. So now we're gonna go through and I'm gonna kind of just scrape some of these this top layer off and it's gonna make it a lot flatter and then I'll just kind of spread it with my fingers. Okay, the brick wall is all done. Are you guys ready to see?
I'm not gonna lie, this was not my favorite project, but I do think it was worth it. I think it looks so realistic, like you can touch it, all of the texture. I don't think you'd ever believe that these are like faux wall panels. Okay, let's talk cost because I'm trying to get better at this on my channel to let you guys know how much projects like these cost. So first, my wall is about eight feet by eight feet. So I used two of the wall panels from Home Depot, then the joint compound, then the stucco repair kit, then I had two samples of paint. I used leftover white paint to kind of distress it that I already had, so that didn't cost me anything. And then the grout. And that total is much less than the $600, $650 that I looked up if I were to actually get brick tile. I think this looks just as good. That's it for today's video. We still have one more video that I wanna do because I still have a few projects left in this hallway. It's not completely done. So make sure that you're subscribed so you can see how it turns out. I will see you guys next week. Bye.